episode of Crypto Hustles Market Update, where we're going to go over Bitcoin, um, blockchain, and everything having to do with the uh, cryptocurrency world. Welcome, uh, Rocky Crypto Hustle. How are you today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Really good. Um, a lot of exciting stuff going on in uh, the blockchain world and Bitcoin. It has real energy right now, I think. Um, a lot of things in the works. So I'm glad we're starting this uh, show with you and we get over some of the basics. And then later as we go on, we could get people's uh, questions because I'm sure there's people that have a lot of questions about this topic. Absolutely, absolutely. We're, we're definitely in a new paradigm shift as, uh, as technology is evolving. So it's, uh, it's very fascinating and interesting to be in the, in the trenches or in the front line of this movement. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, so first, real quick, for all the, the viewers and people of Minds and even other people outside of the Minds community, let's go over some of the basics because I, I still think a lot of people don't know the basics of Bitcoin, and I think this is where we should uh, kind of help focus it a little bit more. So, just uh, what what are Bitcoins? Okay, so the best way to describe Bitcoin is it's an open source ledger, right? So, just like you know, you have um, units, dollars in your bank account. These are uh, these represent credits in your bank account. Um, but it's controlled by the banks, right? And it's controlled by their centralized servers, right? So when you go into your bank account, it's just units sitting on their servers. In fact, they're just IOUs sitting on their servers of checkbook money that they owe you, right? It's not even like uh, tier one money that's that's uh, created by the central banks or whatnot. Generally, commercial banks are uh, creating another form of, of credit or money, but that's another story, I digress. So Bitcoin, on the other hand, is an open source ledger that's not controlled by a centralized server and the units are actually controlled by the individual so you don't need to go through a third party right uh, when you go through a third party there's a lot of trust involved if they you know if they default um, or if they happen to go bankrupt have some kind of liquidity crisis like what's what we'd seen in Greece or in Cyprus with things like bail-ins, then you won't get your money. And then when everyone tries to get their money at the same time, there's not enough uh, money there. And then you have a run on the banks. Whereas with Bitcoin, every unit of value that's locked onto the blockchain is accessible by the individuals who happen to own the private keys of those units or of those coins right so as long as you keep your private keys safe no one can mess with your money it's only you can control it and you can access it at any time and you can spend as much of it as you want and you're in the driver's seat you completely cut out the third party entirely and so this uh this network it was it was created uh through the cypherpunk movement from for those of you who uh who don't know who the cypherpunks are, uh, it's a, uh, a, a hacktivist movement of, of, I guess you could say, crypto anarchists uh, that developed in the 90s using cryptography as a means of protecting our privacy and, and liberty, right? Because, you know, technology is a double-edged sword. You know, technology is something that can liberate us or something that can destroy the world. It depends on how, the, how we use it. And so, Bitcoin came as a result of this uh, cypherpunk movement, and uh, it was invented in 2009 by a mysterious figure named Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who he is. And uh, basically, it's the first they've been trying to work on this model of a, of a digital decentralized currency or uh, cryptocurrency for a while. But the problem that they've always encountered is how do you create digital co tokens that you can't copy or counterfeit, right? How do you not double spend digital tokens? Because as we all see with things like file sharing, like torrents and things like that, it's very easy to create copies. And so this is the this is the the blockchain. What the blockchain has to offer is that it's solved this problem, right? And so um, so the blockchain is for for those who don't know is the ledgers. It's the name of this ledger is called the blockchain. And the reason why it's called a blockchain is because you have all these 
miners, they're called miners, is basically people running these specialized computers. And their job is to solve a complex math problem to, um, to essentially confirm transactions on this network. So let's say there's a whole group of us, we all send a bunch of transactions right now, Bitcoin transactions, I send some Bitcoin to you and vice versa, all this stuff. These miners are all racing with each other to solve this problem. As soon as a problem is solved, it's almost like winning a lottery. They do this by throwing out these alphanumeric codes, you know, billions per second type of thing. As soon as it's solved, a block is solved. And what happens is a group of transactions that happen on the network get bunched together into a block of transactions and they get stamped on the ledger. And then the math problem evolves based on all previous blocks or all previous transactions. So it's a it's a math problem that's always moving forward. This is why you can't like reverse transactions or go back and change the ledger. It's a it's an unchangeable ledger, right? Which is more than what we can say for most centralized ledger systems that we have today where information can easily be hacked or doctored, right? Many, many hackers in the world have tried to hack the Bitcoin blockchain and it's the most secure blockchain in the world, the most secure ledger in the world. And so this is, and every time a miner solves one of these blocks, they're rewarded with a creation of new Bitcoins. Bitcoins are hard capped. There will only ever be 21 million of them. There are close to 16 million now. And uh, coming up this summer, these mining rewards are going to get halved from 25 to 12.5 because they, there's, um, they get reduced every four years, the rewards. It started off with 50, went down to 25, 12.5, so on and so forth. And I believe the last Bitcoin will be mined in the year 2150. So the beautiful thing about the blockchain and this, this monetary system is, for one, it's open source, so everyone can see the code. Everything on the, on the network is transparent, so everyone can see all the transactions. Yet at the same time, it provides a level of privacy to individuals because you don't have to necessarily attach your name or ID to any of these transactions. And, you know, there's ways to even obfuscate or, or, or hide Bitcoins type of thing or who owns what. So all of this becomes possible. So it's a really, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a perfect money system. And it's something that people have been waiting for for a very, very long time because the banks have been running a monopoly on creating money for it's one of the oldest monopolies on the planet. So, so my website is cryptohustle.com. On this website, there's all kinds of guides on how to get started with Bitcoin. And I also put a special emphasis on uh, market, uh, the markets. So, you know, it's, it's geared for towards uh, beginners, crypto enthusiasts, investors, and traders. CryptoHustle.com.